What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we're gonna be getting into a shot list for your real estate videos that you guys can take with you. Whenever you're on a shoot, maybe you're just getting started and you have no idea what to do. Maybe you've been doing this a long time. Maybe you're training other people. I'm gonna get into all the shots that you need and a few extras that I like to throw in there too. So thanks for joining, let's get into it. If you like content like this, make sure to subscribe to the channel real quick before we get into it and you forget because you don't want to miss out on future stuff. So thank you. All right. So before we even start thinking of a shot list for any type of projects, we got to think about what we're doing with the video and why we're making it. So for these types of videos, the main goal is to show the property, cut down on showings and help buyers make their decision. So you want to get all the shots that make it feel like they've been there, they've experienced the place, they know all the highlights, they know all the main details, they know the layout, and they know the location of the house. So some nearby surroundings really help with that too. The second goal is to show what makes that house unique compared to anything else on the market. So that could be anything from special upgrades, special finishes, special unique design features, whether it's like archways or cool things like that, cool staircases, pools, could be a huge garage, <laughs> could even just be the proximity to other things. Honestly, that's a really big selling point a lot of the times. For the most part, these shots are gonna be functional. So you're delivering information to a viewer. That's pretty much it. If you're not doing that, if it's confusing to watch, if it's distracting to watch, if you're doing all sorts of crazy stuff, they're not gonna get any benefit from watching that over just looking at pictures. So you gotta keep that in mind when you're framing up your shots and whenever you're planning out what your movements are gonna be through the house. When you're building your business, the number one way to get new clients is referrals. And it's whenever these agents post your videos on Facebook, on Instagram, wherever. When you have any type of unique thing that shows off your style and your creativity, besides all these functional shots, it'll just help you stand out a little bit and make people know that it's your videos. Because most people are just doing these completely functionally or completely the other way which is usually not good <laughs> so having some bit of creativity but restraining it to where it's still a functional shot is going to help you stand out as a unique videographer while you're also making this house stand out as a unique property so as far as actually being on location shooting what I like to do is walk through the house just without my camera, look at everything, make sure I notice little details. I kind of think ahead about what shots I'm going to get, what details I might want to get, what like interesting perspectives there might be um, besides the obvious. So I'll go through and do all that. Obviously talk with your client, make sure if there's any specific things they want to highlight, you're accommodating that. For these shoots, I pretty much just will use a 16 to 35 lens on a full frame and a 50 millimeter lens for my details. I used to use a 100 millimeter macro and still do sometimes for like brand logos for like appliances and stuff, but usually 50 millimeters get some nice compression, get some nice blurry backgrounds that look fancy and you're going to see a little bit more about where the detail is in the house. So what I like to do is I like to go through the exterior to the interior, all the rooms, everything on a wide angle lens. So usually I'll get at least two or three wide shots per main room, which would be like living rooms, kitchens, primary bedrooms, game rooms, media rooms, stuff like that. That's a really important selling feature. But for secondary bedrooms, I'll usually just get like one shot, just a nice clean shot going in. Make sure it's good and you can keep moving on. Save time. So I'll go through and get all of those and I'll make sure I cover different angles to where whenever you're editing, you can really keep it to where the viewer knows where they are in the house because you got to remember they've never been there. 
So if you go from room to room or like detail, they might get confused and you don't want them to have no real clue of what the layout is, you know? So yes, all the main rooms, all the bedrooms, all the bathrooms, make sure you just get all those shots. Sometimes you don't need them for the video, but the worst thing is to have to reschedule coming back because you missed something. That just, it's not good. So once I get all my wide shots, I'll usually go back through with my 50 millimeter and I'll usually shoot at about 1.8 to 2.0. Um, I've done it with a 24 to 70 also at 2.8 and that's totally fine. Uh, these types of shoots, it actually helps to have more detail in your shots instead of super, super, super blurry backgrounds. So yeah, 2.8 is great. One big perk about 50mm also is that pretty much every camera company has a really, really cheap version of a 50mm 1.8, which is going to be totally fine for this type of work. So I'll go through, get all my 50mm details. I usually shoot those at 60 frames per second so I can slow them down, make sure they're long enough in post, make sure they're super creamy, super smooth, to where you can really emphasize whatever that feature is. So with my details, I'll usually go all the way back through everything. I'll get exterior details like the address, the doorway, any specific like structural details or textures like cool bricks or stones or whatever. Then I'll go through all the main areas like the living room, the primary bedroom, the kitchen, pools, game rooms, all that type of stuff. Not really going to go through secondary bedrooms with the 50 millimeter. It's just a little bit excessive. A reason that I like to do all these in batches is because you're not going to have to be rebalancing your gimbals a ton of time. So it should save you time in shooting. I like to knock out my drone stuff last because a lot of times we'll start these shoots midday or something so that there's more light on the interior. And then by the time that we're done with everything else, the drone shots are going to look a lot nicer if the sun's at more of an angle. It'll just be a lot more of a dramatic shot. And a lot of times these are going to be the start of the video or the end of the video. So really good lighting pays off, pays off big time. So as far as drone shots, I like to get some shots of the house that look pretty much like my gimbal shots, my ground shots, but a little bit higher. Sometimes you can see like over trees, you can see more of the house, you can see more of like how big it is, or you can see a little bit more context than on the ground. I've got another video about these drone shots up here, but for drone shots, I like to do shots that show as much detail of the house as possible. So I like to actually get them lower and closer than most people do. And I found that that really helps because it just keeps you focused on the house and you're showing a different perspective of it. So you gotta think about your perspective um, buyers that are watching this. Honestly, for these, they're mostly functional so you can stick to the basics. If there's any community things nearby, like a park or a lake or something. I like to get some drone shots of that too while it's up. Sometimes you're able to get some cool shots that are like crane shots where it's like coming down and up or coming back and away from the house that are just really cool. So now you've got your wide interior, exterior shots. You've got your detail shots, interior, exterior, and you've got your drone shots and you're pretty much gonna be good to go. At that point, sometimes the lighting's changed inside and you wanna go back through and get some cool little detail shot. You wanna get like a fireplace at night or something, pool view at night with the lights on, whatever. If there's anything that you can do that's like a little bit extra creative, I like to do those too. Sometimes I'll use a drone where it like starts off showing the back patio and then it backs up like all the way over a pool. And for most people watching, they're just gonna be like, how the heck did they get that shot? That's insane. I'll attach my gimbal on a monopod so I can just hold it up really high on the exteriors but get a better quality shot than a drone. That's fun. You can like fly through a tree or something. You look ridiculous doing it, but it's totally worth it to keep this stuff fun for you. <laughs> and then if it's a big property, sometimes I like to just get really, really big long shots that are super smooth, 
Let me know if you have any guesses on how I do these. They're pretty fun. So anyways, here is a shot list of everything compiled into one with your camera settings, with all this stuff. And don't forget, I'll have all this gear linked down in the description for beginner type of setup and then the setup that I'm using right now and that I like to use. Um, thinking about changing it up to a cinema camera, I think it'd be really interesting to get either the new Sony or the C70 maybe just because they have a lot more dynamic range and a lot more just interesting capabilities. Um, I'm always looking for ways to change things up to where my videos are a little different than everybody else's. I'm super curious what you guys are using and if any of you guys have tried out some of these new cameras. All right, so that's gonna be it for this one. I know a lot of you guys might just be starting out and I figured this would have been pretty nice to have whenever I started. So. I hope this is helpful. I'd love to see you guys work and what you guys are doing with this. So feel free to send me links on Instagram, send me comments on here. Uh, I just love to stay in touch with you guys and see what you guys are up to. So hope that was helpful. If you like the video, make sure to hit the like button. Helps the channel out a ton, helps get this info to other people. Make sure to subscribe if you're not already so you don't miss out on any other videos. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Thank you.